Commissioner Maura Gagan Quinn has been honoured by the EU with the task of charting the future of its research, science and innovation policy and implementation uh, over the next uh, number, of number of years. Uh, it is noteworthy, I think, that innovation has been a new addition to that uh, profile. Uh, and we were all extremely delighted in this country, and I say everybody in this room is associated with uh, the area of science and innovation, we're absolutely delighted that an Irish woman would be chosen for that centrally important task, as it mirrors the importance that we attach to innovation in what we are doing in this institute and what this country as a whole is trying to do. Commissioner Gagan Quinn brings deep experience of politics in Ireland to the wider European stage and is bringing refreshingly wonderful enthusiasm and determination to bear as you will have experienced or witnessed already and as you will in a moment. And we are honoured that you are here today, uh, Commissioner, to also tell us about, about um, innovation from a European point of view. As a fellow West of Irelander, <laughs> Not quite, not quite Mayo. <laughs> uh, it's also a per personal pleasure to ask you to talk to us a little bit about innovation in Europe. Commissioner Gagan. Thank you. Thank you. Rochter or Hegarty, Ian the special to Agus Ruin Wishle. Boelamar dos Fierhuin Buichus Laka Lishan Doctor O'Hegarty, a soft queen who are Hurt Rumsa Vahensho, Er Okad Hotavok, the Kusuntasok, Nihawan Gholash Trinode, Ach Govlaklia, Agus Guntir Fad, Agus Marialish and Viano Hasaram Glaka Lishan Guin Hurishin. Uh, Dr. Hegarty, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're, I think the West's awake is certainly uh, <laughs> evident today. And uh, while Dr. Hegarty and I come from the West of Ireland, I'm afraid we disagree when it comes to All-Ireland Football Day, if either Galway or Mayo ever makes it that far this year. Uh, I'm very pleased uh, to be here today for the official opening of the Trinity Biomedical Sciences Institute. The launch of this institute cements the reputation of Trinity College as a world-class centre of learning and a key partner in European-level research projects, and it shows confidence in the role that research and innovation will play in Ireland's economic recovery. As the European Commissioner for Research, Innovation and Science, I particularly welcome the opening of this exciting new facility that combines the best of research and innovation, teaching, interdisciplinary research, industrial development, and exploitation of results are all taking place under one roof. Indeed, the Institute itself is a remarkable innovation. Research and innovation, as all of you know, are at the top of Europe's political agenda, rightly seen as the keys to boosting growth and jobs, and to tackling some of the most important challenges we face in the 21st century. I'd like to put the new Biomedical Sciences Institute in the wider context of Europe's drive to push research and innovation to the forefront of our economic and political priorities. This is our best way of delivering the jobs and growth that Europe badly needs, and of getting the answers to some of the biggest challenges we face, including the challenges to improve health and quality of life. Last June, European Union leaders adopted the Europe 2020 strategy. This is our blueprint to transform Europe into a smart, sustainable and socially inclusive society and economy. It is aimed at getting Europe out of its current economic difficulties and research and innovation are right at, at its heart. We are implementing the innovation goals of Europe 2020 through the Innovation Union flagship initiative that I launched in October. The overarching goal of the Innovation Union is to improve the basic conditions that allow researchers, entrepreneurs and companies to <coughs> flourish. We need to create the conditions that will help our researchers excel, and we need to remove barriers along the innovation chain barriers that prevent innovators from transforming the excellent basic research that Europe does so well into new products and services. 
Besides the clear economic rationale, we also need to boost research and innovation to tackle other challenges we face. In the field of medicine and health, these include an aging population, the increasing cost of developing new drugs, and pressure on national health and research budgets, for example. Research and innovation can also help us to capitalize on potentially enormous commercial opportunities for European companies, such as new vaccines, diagnostics, medicines, treatments, and services. The phase where research is exploited is a key one for society. While some new therapies can be exploited directly by clinical treatment on a patient, others need the involvement of industrial or commercial partners. And that's why this new centre is so important as it brings these different phases of the innovation chain together under one roof. Ensuring a smooth path from laboratory to market, whatever the research sector, whatever the technology, is one of the key aims of Innovation Union. I won't go into all of the details of the Innovation Union initiative. It contains no fewer than 34 detailed commitments but I would like to give you a flavour of its main objectives and how we intend to reach them. The EU's national leaders have agreed to prioritise research and innovation as the motor for growth. We're taking an integrated and strategic approach, as many of our trading partners, of course, are doing as well, whereby our innovation objectives shape our policies in all relevant areas. Our innovation goals begin with ensuring that we have a strong foundation of excellent research. While the current economic climate is very difficult, we must safeguard, as the Taoiseach said, public investment in areas on which our future growth will depend, R&D, innovation, education and skills. Ireland indeed and other countries such as France and Germany are doing just that, because they realize that research and innovation are key to economic recovery. And in this economic climate, it is more important than ever that we invest European taxpayers' money as efficiently as possible. The Europe 2020 strategy sets a clear research and innovation investment goal to invest 3% of GDP in R&D. One recent study shows that reaching this target could create up to 3.7 million jobs and increase annual GDP in Europe by nearly 800 billion euro by 2025. This truly is an economic strategy aimed at creating real jobs and economic growth as well as the answers to our grand societal challenges. Researchers are a precious resource and we need more of them. It's estimated that to reach our 3% target by 2020, we will need at least 1 million more researchers in Europe, with two thirds of these working in the business sector. I firmly believe that Europe will only fully benefit from the talent, knowledge and ingenuity of our researchers if it becomes as easy for research institutes, universities and companies to cooperate within the European Union as it is within their own member states we need to remove obstacles to the cross-border flow of people, ideas and funding. Despite some progress in recent years, we have yet to complete the long-promised European research area. So Innovation Union undertakes to complete the European research area by 2014. In practice, this means taking action to remove obstacles to the mobility of researchers and knowledge and to enhance the coordination of national research funding. We also want better quality doctoral training and improved employment conditions and gender balance in research careers. We need to <coughs> encourage modernization of Europe's universities and develop more attractive research training and careers. And we will continue developing world-class research infrastructures in Europe. But boosting the quality and scope of European research is only the beginning. The Innovation Union aims to strengthen every link in the innovation chain, from frontier or blue sky research 
to the successful transfer of this research into commercial products and services. In other words, a smooth path from the laboratory all the way to the marketplace. We need, for example, easier access to finance for SMEs, faster interoperable standard setting, more affordable IPR, including a unitary patent, and a genuine European knowledge market. Other key initiatives will aim to facilitate the joint public procurement of innovative products and services and the creation of conditions for an EU-wide operation of venture capital. <coughs> Access to finance is a significant constraint on business-led innovation in Europe. This leads to insufficient private sector R&D spending, which is the main reason for Europe's R&D investment gap. And more crucially, to a lack of financial support at the commercialization phase for young innovative companies. The financial market crisis and the ensuing economic recession have aggravated that situation. So we need to take action. By 2012, the European Commission will ensure that venture capital funds established in any member state can function and operate and invest freely across the EU, if necessary, by adopting a new legislative regime. The Commission will also work to help member states streamline social welfare and pension rules that currently often stand in the way of cross-border activities. Innovation Union also highlights the importance of continuing to invest in high-quality research facilities. The Biomedical Sciences Institute here is certainly helping us reach that goal. Trinity College has achieved an excellent international reputation in immunology research, a key sector in biomedicine where important new knowledge is generated and applied for the benefit of patients. I'm also pleased to see that the new institute includes facilities for medical device technologies. This is a hugely innovative sector and much of the innovation takes place here in Europe. The EU market for medical devices amounts to some 95 billion euro with 500,000 jobs in 22,500 companies. We have a number of medical device hotspots here in Ireland Last year, for instance, I visited the MedTech cluster in Galway, and I'm sure that this new institute will further strengthen those. Trinity College is already an active participant in European-level research funded by the Seventh Framework Programme managed by my department. Better known as FP7, you all know that it's the world's largest public research programme. By 2013, FP7, will over seven years have invested more than 55 billion in research and innovation. Naturally, health research commands an important chunk of that budget, with over 6 billion euro invested over the same period. We have already allocated 3.2 million euro through 3.2 billion euro, excuse me, through 690 grants in the health theme in the first five years of FP7. This represents a significant investment in the research capacities of our universities, our companies and research organizations right across Europe, and a significant investment in better health and the improved quality of life for millions of people. Trinity College is currently taking part in nine research projects under FP7's health program, with three more in the pipeline. These represent total EU grants to Trinity of around 4.8 million euro. Again, the projects deal with issues of real concern to the average person, including mechanisms of memory loss in Alzheimer's disease, cancer screening, influenza vaccines, and fair access to healthcare. FP7's next two calls for proposals to be launched next month and in July 2012 will be the largest in our history with more than 18 billion euro available. The approach we will take differs from previous years in that a significant proportion of the funding will support innovation directly. The next call will underpin innovation and competitiveness by supporting top quality collaborative research 
especially between industry and academia. The EU will provide approximately <coughs> 650 million euro for health research under the call to be published next month. We've already published some information on the research topics likely to be covered, and I hope that Irish organisations will apply in great numbers. The Directorate General in Brussels, the National Contact Point for Health Research here, and the European Commission Office in Dublin are always ready to help. We're also supporting, in partnership with the European Federation of Pharmaceutical Industries and Associations, the Innovative Medicines Initiative joint undertaking. This public-private partnership represents a real opportunity to foster innovation in the health and medical sectors. The aim of the IMI is to unblock research bottlenecks in the drug development process and to make pharmaceutical research more cost-effective. This public-private partnership mobilizes €2 billion, Euro, half from the health theme of FP7 and half from the FP companies. The research projects already supported by the IMI bring together dozens of academic and SME participants and more than 20 large pharmaceutical companies, and the first successes can already be seen. For instance, a new database gathering information from many private and publicly funded sources has been created to tackle the problem of schizophrenia. The database will allow the analysis of data from more than 25,000 patients. The strength of the IMI lies in the pooling of resources and expertise from different stakeholders to address specific and well-focused industrial scientific challenges. This is the kind of cross-sectoral support and approach which is championed by the Innovation Union and which is being further tested under one of the most exciting Innovation Union flagship commitments, the proposal to set up a small number of targeted European innovation partnerships. These will be in areas where clear and measurable goals can be defined and with a very direct link to a specific global or societal challenge. These partnerships will provide a framework for bringing together all the key actors and will weave together all the different relevant instruments already in place. They will couple funding or supply side measures with those on the demand side covering procurement, standards and regulations. A key selection criterion for the partnerships is the market potential for EU industry, the potential for Europe to remain or become a world leader. The Pilot Innovation Partnership is on active and healthy ageing with the goal of adding two more healthy years to our lives. This is a very ambitious target and health researchers and the healthcare industries will of course have a pivotal role to play in reaching it and I hope that you will actively contribute to fulfilling the goal of this partnership. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to congratulate Trinity College on the launch of this impressive new facility. Europe needs more innovations like this, but impressive as it is, this new building counts for little without the ideas, the ingenuity and the dedication of the women and men who will work here, researchers, innovators, administrators, technicians. I wish you all well in this exciting new space. You're contributing in a very concrete way to improving our society and to making the European Union a true innovation union. For that, you have my thanks, my admiration, and my very full support. Gurmahagal.